Hello and welcome to the news at 10 on NTA News 24. We are reaching you live from Abuja. I am on large day. Bello, first the headlines. <music> President Tinobu signs executive orders on oil and gas reforms. <music> African Development Bank promises to cultivate 180,000 hectares of wheat in Nigeria. House of Representatives constitutes committee to look into modalities for payment of living wages to Nigerian workers. Following extensive engagement, analysis and benchmarking with other jurisdictions, President Bola Tinobu has initiated the amendment of primary legislation to introduce fiscal incentives for oil and gas projects, reduce contracting costs and timelines, and promote cost efficiency in local content requirements. Recognizing the urgency to accelerate investments, the President has directed as follows. Introduction of fiscal incentives for non-associated gas midstream and deep water development. Streamlining of contracting process to compress uh, the contracting cycle to six months. The application of the local content requirement without hindering investment or cost competitiveness. Details of uh, these policy directives will be gazetted and communicated by the Federal Ministry of Information and National Orientation. The President, in a statement signed by his Special Advisor on Media and Publicity, Ajirin Galali, directs the Special Advisor to the President on Energy to continue coordinating with all stakeholders to ensure the implementation of these directives within stipulated time frame. Twelve years after its creation, the Obafe Nyawolo Prize for Leadership chose its first leadership recipient in the person of Dr. Akio Miyadishino the eighth elected president of the African Development Bank. President Bola Tinobu, represented by Vice President Kashim Shetima, described the recipient as a man who exemplifies true leadership. Today we are here to celebrate a maverick change maker who has not only thrown our flag all over the world, but has dazzled the world with the nobility of his thoughts, indispensability of his ideas, and dynamism of his actions. Today, we gather to honor a man who has carved his path in one of the most challenging offices to lead, Dr. Akimumbi Ayodeji Adishina. Like Chief Aulo, our honoree today has exemplified the values that have shaped the course of history at all the institutions he has headed, all the offices, all the offices he occupied. Former Nigerian President Yakubu Gowan, Lushegun Obasanjo, Good Luck Jonathan, and former Secretary General of the Commonwealth, Emekan Yaku, as well as Heads of State of Cameroon, Ethiopia, and Tanzania, paid glowing tributes to Dr. Akimu Miyadishino for his efforts in using his office as President of the African Development Bank to foster socio economic growth on the continent. May best be described as having been very well done. He represents the best of Nigeria, hard-watching, diligent, brilliant, forward-looking, and deeply patriotic. Just as Chief of Wallowo, Adeshina is one among the few visionaries for Nigeria's and Africa's development. Indeed, you could not have chosen a more deserving person. It was common then to hear the phrase, Agbeloba, farmers are kings, uttered with great pride. We must give new life to our rural areas. If Chief Aulo could do this in the 1960s, then there is no reason why rural economies today should be immersed in extreme poverty. 
The prestigious Obafe Naolo Prize for Leadership Award in honor of the Sage is given every two years. There is a ray of hope in Nigeria's quest to attain food sufficiency following the commitment of the African Development Bank to facilitate the cultivation of 118,000 hectares of wheat in the country. Yohannesu Hassenbarau reports that this is in addition to supporting researchers in drought-tolerant maize and sagam. Nigeria has over the years been faced with food insufficiency due to climate change variability. Although Africa and Nigeria inclusive only accounts for less than 4% of the gas emissions, unpredictable weather conditions are having serious impacts on the lives and livelihood of the populace. To address this uncertainty, the African Development Bank is engaging researchers uh, to come up with highly modified and drought-resistant maize, sorghum, and wheat seeds that will survive in temperate regions. That you have climate change doesn't mean you should be too scared. You know, the African Development Bank supported uh, Ethiopia with heat-tolerant wheat varieties that in three years allowed them to become totally self-sufficient in which they are now a net exporter of wheat. And I'm delighted to say that the African Development Bank this year is supporting Nigeria at this, in fact, this uh, 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 a dry season to cultivate 118,000 hectares of this heat-tolerant wheat varieties. The Center for Dryland Agriculture, Bayero University, Kano, among the centers the bank will engage. The center has made a lot of breakthroughs including microorganism modification to reduce methane secretion in animals. With the state-of-the-art facility, the director of the center, Professor Muhammad Jibril, said they will collaborate with the bank to produce highly modified seeds. In Kano, Yohannes Ahasambaro, NTA News. Food security is now a major concern and is a dominating discourse with government making commitments towards addressing food insecurity in the country. One of such commitments is the provision of heavy-duty farming equipment for smallholder farmers to enable them expand production. Musa Babali reports that President Tinubu has consequently directed the production and supply of 2,000 tractors annually. Among the countries with the lowest utilization of heavy-duty equipment for farming activities with 0.27 horsepower per hectare against the FAO recommendation of 1.5 horsepower per hectare. The total population of tractors in the country was put at 50,000. What that implies is that we are still at subsistence level in terms of the equipment our farmers use to carry out planting, you know, uh, weeding, harvesting, and all the other, you know, activities in agriculture. To bridge this tractor utilization gap led to this understanding between the federal government and John D. Group. The MOU signed under the directive of the president is for the John D. Group to produce 2,000 tractors every year for the next 10 years. The agreement was signed in November 2023, and this is a follow-up by management of the producers. It's a bigger scheme. It's a it's a longer um, longer project that we are working on, and we are really really excited. We know this is going to work. Um, we just need to cross the, the last couple of hurdles. And this is a program that would also not only impact on John Deere. We have other programs that will come into being, like the. Uh, green imperative program that is um, from the Brazilian government with the assistance of Deutsche Bank, uh, where we are going to set up 774 service centers that is in each local government of the Federation. The government is also expecting another 6,000 tractors under the agreement with Brazil under the More Food program. Musa Baba Aliyu, NTA News. In view of the current epileptic power supply, Minister of Power Adebayo Adelabo is appealing to electricity consumers to be more patient as federal government and industry players are working tirelessly to address challenges and deliver better services to all customers. 
In a message through his ex-handle, the power minister expresses concern over the deteriorating electricity supply despite increase in generation, but says steps are being taken to improve supply. His recent meeting with chief executives of Abuja Electricity Distribution Company, Ibado Electricity Distribution Company, and the managing director of Transmission Company of Nigeria, TCN, is part of engagement to find a lasting solution to power supply challenge. He again warned distribution companies over load rejection and says willful non-performance will not be tolerated while TCN has been tasked to prioritize repair works and damaged transmission towers and power lines. On debts owed generation companies and gas suppliers, the power minister says plans are underway to settle them while issues on vandalization recently witnessed in Abuja, Bene, Port Harcourt and Ibado have been tackled. The governor of Baranu State, Babagana Umar Zulum, has urged the federal government to explore non kinetic approaches to solve challenges of insecurity across the country. This was while delivering a lecture on national unity for participants of course 111 of the Nigerian Defense College in Abuja. The governor noted that government at sub-national levels must join hands with the federal government to address root causes of insurgency. Look on participation, look on opportunities to every Nigerian is something that we need. Without effective national unity, security will never be achieved. The Commandant National Defence College also acknowledged that citizens have a huge role to play not just in tackling security challenges but also in socio-economic aspects of the nation's existence. Leadership still remains a vital component of leadership. So, for we the followers, we have our role well defined for us. How have we been playing that role? Defence College is the apex military training institution for the Nigerian Armed Forces and a centre of excellence for peace support operations training at the strategic level in West Africa. We we'll take a break now. The news continues shortly. Thanks for being there. A Tuesday night attack on communities in parts of Benue State with reported laws of lives and property has attracted the attention of lawmakers in the Senate as they urge authorities to do more in preventing security breaches. National Assembly correspondent Lami Ali reports that the issue came up as a matter of urgent public importance with the leadership resolving to meet President Tinobu to present legislators' perspective on how to address national security challenges. Senator Emmanuel Udende representing Benue Northeast raised the issue as lawmakers settled for the business of the day. He noted the impact of the spate of attacks on economic and social life of residents. The residents of the villages and communities now find themselves targeted on a daily basis by heavy armed terrorists. And the toll continues to be staggering as they bear the brunt, with reports of marauders butchering several villages, leaving many homes completely burnt down, and numerous residents still missing, while the perpetrators, however, remain elusive I have not been apprehended. Some of these bodies hide out in forests in our various communities, like in Agatu, like I said that time. They have forests and they have locations. So the, the mystery of it is that why have we not been able to pick them out of these forests? If you continue to do the same thing over and over again, and you do not get 
You get the same answer. Nothing being done. Why do we have to continue to do the same thing? We need to sit down with Mr. President, who is the commander in chief. Our securities have the capacity. All they need, as I said, is team. Training, equipment, motivation is what they need. With Senator Odende, I assure the good people of the areas affected that this matter is now before the floor of the Senate and that we are taking serious actions. We work with the presidency to ensure that normalcy is restored in those areas and particularly the victims are also catered for. A minute's silence was observed in honor of those who lost their lives. The lawmakers asked the committee of the whole made some adjustments to some clauses in the bill seeking to change the nomenclature of the National Assembly Library Trust Fund to the National Assembly Research Center. The essence of this amendment, uh, Mr. Chairman and distinguished colleagues, is to ensure that the person who will be eligible for appointment as executive uh, secretary, one of the qualifications would be to have been, to have served as a member of either the Senate or the House of Reps, not just House of Reps. The bill was subsequently passed. Bill seeking to amend the Electoral Act was among the five that passed first reading. Senate has confirmed the appointment of Amidu Tadesi and Faswa Bayomi as commissioners for the National Population Commission. The report of the, the Committee on Ethics, Code of Conduct and Public Petitions was adopted as it urges University of Abuja to rescind its decision on the rustication of a student, Igwe Chukwemeka, on alleged wrongful accusation from the National Assembly, Lami Ali, NTA News. A laborer is worthy of his or her wages in a common phrase. However, lawmakers in the Green Chamber have rephrased this to say that laborers are worthy of living wages commensurate with current economic realities. And to this effect, the House of Representatives has constituted an ad hoc committee to look into modalities for the payment of living wages to Nigerian workers at rates that match economic realities. National Assembly correspondent Mitai Reikman reports on these and other deliberations at Wednesday's plenary. Deputy Minority Leader Ali Yusani Madaki presented the motion on behalf of 40 lawmakers who are pushing for a new living wage for workers. He argues that with growing inflation, the purchasing power of workers is increasingly on the decline. Presently, no laborer can live in Nigeria with a wage of less than 100,000 naira. A less very immediate and pragmatic step are taken to improve the income of Nigerians. More Nigerians will go down the economic line with the poor population increasing. This, in effect, will lead to desperation. The House drew the attention of security agencies to the tide of banditry in Katsina State, calling for urgent security measures. Some gangs of armed bandits from neighboring Kaduna and Zampara states are making all efforts to gain control over some communities in Katsina State. The same issue is happening in Benue State. The same issue is happening in Niger State. The same issue is happening in some part of the Southeast. Adopting other motions, the House mandates its Committee on National Planning and Economic Development to investigate implementation of the national budget. This is to determine compliance with authorized funding structure for ministries, departments, and agencies of government. To review the need and rationale for exemption of some government institutions from the envelope regime on the national budgetary system. Two infrastructure bills scaled second reading. To engage with the transmission company of Nigeria and the other relevant agencies to expedite immediate connection of Ringim and Tora local governments to the national grid to amend the Federal Medical Centers Act to provide for the establishment of the Federal Medical Centers in Simbaki in Wamba, Nasarawa State. A bill for an act to establish national tax crimes and oversight commission also scaled second reading. The proposed commission, lawmakers say, will address revenue leakages emanating from tax evasion and related crimes. 
from the National Assembly, Mitaire Ikwen, NTA News. Resident doctors are seeking collaboration with the Nigerian Television Authority to create awareness on health education, which is central to achieving a healthier community. The Association of Resident Doctors harped on the critical role of the NTA in the health education drive during a cutsy call to the management. Tokwe Alabi reports. Health education is pivotal in improving community well-being by promoting knowledge and healthy practices across all age groups. To increase awareness on the importance of health education, the Association of Resident Doctors is seeking collaboration with the Nigerian Television Authority to sensitize the public on key health matters. You have malaria. These are the things that you might think about, but these are the ways to prevent it. Lassa fever is coming in. These are the things you can do to prevent it. How many people even realize that during the heat period there was a lot of viral infection that could have just been solved by just washing your hand and, and, and maintaining basic hygiene. NTA's Director General Salihu Abdul Hamid Dembos, represented by the Director of Medical Services Damian Bai, assured the resident doctors of NTA's commitment and readiness to work with the association to achieve the set target. The times are quite challenging and if we'll use this uh, platform to also make some money to defray some of our costs, that will be nice. Uh, once we agree, we interface with you on how best to proceed. Both parties agreed that health education is critical to achieving a healthier community while ensuring equal access to health care resources. In Abuja, Tokwe Alabi, NTA News. Heavyweight star Anthony Joshua set to fight former UFC champion Francis Gnu in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. And Super Falcons forward Rashid Ajibade wins Atletico Madrid Player of the Month. Let's join us spot desk for details. Starvation toll rises to 20 is more feared dead in Gaza. Details of these and more with Oyeyemi Ajayi. Calls to allow more aid into Gaza Strip grow louder as health officials report 20 people in total have died from malnutrition and dehydration. Gaza Health Ministry spokesperson says in a statement that they believe that dozens are dying silently as a result of starvation without reaching hospitals. Now elsewhere, a Kenyan opposition leader had said he planned to launch a new court challenge against a plan to send police officers to Haiti. Last October, Kenya agreed to lead a UN-authorized international police force to the troubled Caribbean nation to help combat unprecedented levels of gang violence. The Kenyan High Court in January blocked the deployment, ruling it was unconstitutional in part due to the lack of reciprocal agreement between the two countries. But last Friday, Kenya's President William Ruto said he and the Haitian Prime Minister Harold Henry had signed a deal intended to fast-track the departure of Kenyan police to Haiti. The opposition leader says he believes the agreement is invalid and fails to address objections made by the judge in January. This is the News at 10 on NTA News 24. Here's a look at our major stories. President Tinubu signs executive orders on oil and gas reforms. African Development Bank promises to cultivate 118,000 hectares of width in Nigeria. <music> 